So let's have a prayer here. So grateful to place our hands on our hearts. Take a breath of love and gratitude together. Grateful for our life. Grateful for our very being. Grateful for the truth. We are grateful to come together in recognition of the power of love within us, as us, in, through, and around us. We are not separate from the power of love. We are part of it. So grateful to come together to give and receive support, to open our mind to infinite intelligence, pure wisdom, and light. So grateful to have inspiration flowing through each and every one of us. What I know is that the word spoken is the word of God. I know that the music is the music of God, that Ted and I and everyone else are in tune with that higher Holy Spirit self, and we rejoice. We joy, rejoice to be uplifted and inspired by what transpires today between us, among us. We are grateful and thankful to share the benefits of this healing time together with everyone, everywhere, because we are one with them. We let it be, and so it is. Amen. 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 Yes, beautiful. So I'm going to introduce Ted, who has been here many times, thankfully. And what I can tell you is he is a dear friend. I'm very grateful for him in my life. And in his journey of 70 plus years, Ted has lived a full life that has included growing up on a farm, having a successful business, as well as going through bankruptcy, the loss of his wife, cancer, and living happily in a blended family with his current wife, Mary Ellen, and their six children, 18 grandchildren, and one great-grand. Ted is the much-loved leader of our men's ministry at the Power of Love Ministry, and he co-leads our bereavement support group. His rich life filled with love has led him to be a prolific songwriter, having written hundreds of songs about love and loss. And I am so glad you're here with us today. I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Jennifer. It's always a pleasure for me to be here, to get an opportunity to share the music and, uh, yeah, mix them up. Mix them up. So welcome, everyone. There's a need to talk about it Though some have climbed mountains and shouted Love mm. We're gonna talk about love For no matter what we do Before this life on earth is through we need to be love. <laughs> Men let pride get in their way, caught up in living the every day, too busy to stop and think what this life is about, making a living. Climb to the top Could have life's true fortunes If they'd only stop Take the time To give and take love For no matter what we do Before this life on earth is through We need to be love Yes, there's a need to talk about it, though some have climbed mountains and shouted, love, mm, we're gonna talk about love, 
For no matter what we do Before this life on earth is through We need to be loved We need to be loved We need to be loved Yay! Yay, Ted! Thank you so much. You be love, that's for sure. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I am looking for a button I can't find. Hang on. There we go. Thank you so much, Ted. Oh, yeah. So it's a gray drizzly day here and uh i'm very grateful to come together with you and share with you the perfect love that we are shining through everything in our hearts our minds our lives very grateful for that and just yeah and thanks to the folks who are keeping their cameras on and uh keeping me company here Joy Liel, it's good to see you recovering there. So grateful, so grateful for your precious life. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. So what's going on? So much is going on. Crazy amount is going on. And uh, I, I've been writing about it in my blog, my dad and his wife, they were, uh, they live in Black Mountain, North Carolina, which is about 20 minutes outside of Asheville, which um, took, uh, you know, a really heavy hit from the Helene hurricane. Um, unbelievable hit, really. It's really quite phenomenal. And um, the place where they live, they live in a retirement community it's got about 500 residents there, all kinds of buildings. They live in a condo. They didn't have any damage to their condo, but um, power out, water out, internet out, all that stuff. And of course, um, imperiled in the sense of the roads were blocked and all of that. I'm sure a lot of us saw a lot of it on the news. So after five days of no water, no um, power, where they were hauling water from a stream, and in the community, they to, just to be able to flush toilets, they were hauling water buckets from a stream. And uh, they live in a community that has a dining hall uh, that they go to for meals a couple times a week. You know, they have a fully equipped condo so they only go there here and there but with no electricity and no running water uh they were uh, pretty much everybody was taking their meals in the um community hall and um my dad said uh, well they wanted to get out of there and go someplace else a friend who lives in venice florida offered them their beautiful home uh, they were not there at the time, uh, won't be there till later this month. So um, they escaped there. And um, part of <laughs> my dad said, one of the reasons they wanted to get out of there is standing in line for food with people who haven't had a shower in five days. It's no fun. No fun at all. Yeah. I would not be afraid to go skinny dipping or maybe not skinny dipping, bathing suit dipping in that stream, no matter how cold it was personally, personally, that's me, but I know that's not everybody and I respect that. But um, yeah, a lot of people, if you don't have electricity, hard to boil water and do all those different things. So um, they went to Venice and then, uh, you know, a few days after they're in Venice, here comes Hurricane Milton heading uh, towards them, but not a direct hit. And then as Hurricane Milton got closer and closer to the coast, 
uh, it, it became actually pretty much a direct hit on where they were. My dad refused to um, evacuate. He said he just couldn't go through the hassle of it. He's 87. And he's like, eh. And they fortunately were in a house that was built in 2016. So uh, those newer houses are built to withstand these kinds of storms. And still, they were only a mile from the beach. So um, they made it through that. No power, no water. The water came back on. The power hasn't come back on yet. So now they're leaving on Monday to go back home because they do have water and power back home even though it's rough back home. So that's the little journey that um, we've been on in the last couple of weeks. And of course, with my aging parents there, um, my stepmother, my father, um, you know, I think one of the most challenging things for people is when someone they love is going through a difficult time and they can't, you can't relieve the burden, right? You wish you could take it on yourself, but you can't, you can't, there's no way you can. So uh, obviously we've all been through that many times, having our human experience. And so what we learn as spiritual students is not to entertain the negative thoughts, not to entertain the negative thoughts. I I do have friends who are not spiritual students like we are, who say things like, um, um, oh, it's only going to get worse for them. They say things like that. You know, that's how I would say the majority of people think, right? It's only going to get worse for them. Oh, this must be so hard for them. Um, they, they must have terrible despair or... You know, they'll say things like, oh, that's not going to go well. Um, oh, that's going to be horrible. Um, and <laughs> sometimes my knee-jerk reaction is, why would you say that? You know, I forget. This person doesn't have the training that a lot of the people I know have. So they're like, well, I'm just, look at the obvious. It's going to be horrible. I'm like, okay, okay, that's right. I remember now. So the thing for me is not to um, buy into all of that. And and for the most part, I will say I've got that down. I've really got that down. And still, you know, I didn't like it when days went by in North Carolina and I didn't hear from them. And there was no way to get any kind of word out of the community that they live in. All the phones went to uh, some person in marketing who uh, wasn't answering their phone, just a voicemail. And uh, I knew there was no point in leaving a voicemail. And uh, then somehow I, I decided to go to Facebook. I saw they had a Facebook group. So I went to that Facebook group to try and get some information. And, you know, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. And one of the things you do when you're a leader is you, you look out over the landscape and you think of what everybody needs, not just what you need or what you'd like, but what everybody needs, what will bring benefit to the whole community. And so um, I'm thinking, okay, this is what these people need to do and they need to do it now. And this is how they can do it. And they ought to have uh, provided for some of these things. I did have some judgment. There's no question about it. I wouldn't say I was angry or anything like that, but I just was like, okay, these people are running a community with 500 elderly people in it. They need to have their act a little bit better together. And and when, when the dust has settled in a few months from now, I I will go back to them and I'll say, look, I'd just like to discuss this with somebody who has some real authority because that's, that's not cool to just leave thousands of people who are trying to find out about their relatives um, hanging. 
with no way to get us any kind of word because they none of them had any mobile coverage until they brought in that Starlink technology, I guess, that beefs up the cell cell things. So for me, I was just watching how judgmental am I feeling? Uh, am I really worried? I didn't feel really worried. I didn't, honestly, because I could feel, and that's a great, one of the great things about having a strong intuition. Is I could feel they were okay. I, I knew it was stressful, but I knew they were okay. They were physically okay, that they're home. I could feel all of that was true. So I wasn't concerned about that. I wasn't concerned that they wouldn't have food or that they'd be in any kind of um, physically threatening situation. I, I just do wish things were better organized. And um, a lot of things I wish were better organized as many of us do, right? So I'm sure there's plenty of people that wish the power of love ministry was better organized. And I am one of them, you know? And so we work on that week after week, after week, year after year, after year, after year. And we're in our second decade. So now it's decade after decade. And it's just, you keep doing better and doing better. And staying out of judgment is very, very helpful. So, and I had judgments about my dad. One of the days, he he doesn't like driving on the freeway anymore. You know, at 87 years old, it's just all, it's a, it's a little overwhelming for him, which I understand. And yet they decided to go to this house in Florida and it was a 14 hour drive. They took one day, they did 10 hours. And it's like, why? Why, dad? Why? Why are you doing that 10 hour day? But I understand because um, he's a tree and I'm an apple, right? So I understand. I understand, you know, I just rather do the 10 hours than stay overnight and make it easy. Because then I have to find a place to stay and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, cost you 150 bucks or whatever. And, you know, I understand all that. So um, th there again was an opportunity to judge my dad, wish he had done it differently. But, you know, he did what he did. And then he was exhausted when he got there. And I didn't like that either. But a part of what I didn't like about it was I couldn't help them. I couldn't help them. Um, and in hindsight, I was also judging, they decided, they got the offer to go to Venice and literally like two hours later, they left. So, or three or four hours later, I mean, not much. Uh, so there was no way for me to fly there and, and drive them or anything like that. Plus I wouldn't have tried to fly into North Carolina because of all the emergency workers, let them, you know, let me stay out of their way. So I, I wouldn't have gone and um, there, I would have figured something else out. My brother felt the same way. And then, um, then when Milton was coming and they wouldn't leave, they didn't want to leave. And there were all the nightmare stories of people trying to evacuate people driving for 15 hours at a time. And, no gas and all the different things that were happening. So when life gets like that, for me, I have to trust because the alternative of not trusting is way too uncomfortable. Now, I remember uh, 20 years ago having a conversation with a group of folks who were about 30 years old. And um, I, they were talking about worrying. And they were like, oh, I worry about this. Oh, I worry about that. And oh, I worry about that too. And I also worry about this. They were talking about their worries. And they kind of looked at me, what, what about you? What do you worry about? And I said, you know, I don't like worrying. That was my just like off the top of my head thing. And they were like, well, we don't like worrying either, you know, as though there was no alternative. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, I'm I'm really training myself not to worry. It worries optional. You don't have to worry. 
worry is a habit. Worry is a habit. And I love what Ernest Holmes says about worry. I think it's a really brilliant statement. He says, worry is the negative use of your imagination. Worry is the negative use of your imagination. Now, one of the reasons why people let themselves worry is because they think they're powerless and that their thoughts are powerless, right? They don't recognize that their mind is the mind of God and what they hold in their mind has power. It, it has a function. It, it, uh, that the universe is, God is always responding to what we're thinking. And the more we believe it, the more strong the response is. And we've all seen ourselves use that for challenges and making our life hellish. And we've all experienced using it for good and improving our life. So I have experiences with it on a constant basis on a constant basis, you know, people, you're pulling into the parking lot and people say, uh, oh, you will never find a parking space, you know, things like that. I just had that happen the other day. Oh, we're not gonna be able to park. And I'm like, we will be able to park. We only need one space. There will be a space, it'll be fine. I don't think so, I don't think so. No, I don't look at how bad it is here. I, we're not going to find a space. Found a space right by the door, right by the door. Not that we needed a space right by the door, but there it was. And it wasn't even like somebody was pulling out. It was just open, ready, waiting for us. And in fact, right next to us, somebody else pulled out. So if we needed two spaces, there were two spaces. So I think one of the great travesties of organized religion is um, there is a lot that's taught in organized religion about we're not worthy, right? We're sinners and we have to repent for our sins and that um, we, we, um, we don't deserve good because we're sinners. Such a strong thought in the human race consciousness. And it translates to all manner of things like healing the body and finding parking spaces and whether our dads will survive hurricanes and all of these things. You know, we interpret, uh, we've been taught and trained uh, for many lifetimes to interpret things that are difficult as punishment because we're sinners, right? So that's just part of the ego thought system. And I honestly believe that we, you and me, we are bringing forth a golden age of enlightenment. And it is our spiritual responsibility to call BS on these things and to practice uh, the truth and be grateful for the truth every day of our lives that we are not sinners, nor could we ever be sinners. What sinners are does not exist. We're all innocent. Our perfection is intact. Our wholeness is intact. Our magnificence is intact. Our beauty is intact. However, if we do not believe it, we will not see it. We will not, even if it's there, which it is, we will not see it. We refuse to see it because we're convinced that there's we're sinners and we prefer to be right rather than free. Yeah. And so we're all on that journey of choosing to be free instead of being right from an ego perspective. And so um, recently there's been a lot of talk about uh, humbleness, right? And humility. Uh, in the news. Uh, and uh, I think it's an interesting conversation and it's one that's worth talking about. But it, it emanated from um, the governor of Alabama saying that the vice president of the United States 
does not have children, therefore she doesn't have anyone to keep her humble. And the definition of humble as I understand it from, uh, or interpreting it from the governor of Alabama, that she she's thinking of humble like some 40s or 50s housewife kind of humble you know no no aspirations beyond um the household that kind of thing um and i'm not saying that not having aspirations beyond the household is a bad thing i would never you know i think that's a wonderful thing you know people have different preferences and that's a good thing but um there is an idea of a woman being humble that is like, oh, not, not uh, equal to a, a man and lots of things like that that um, I feel are not helpful to us uh, because we're all one with each other. We're all one with each other. We're not even equal. We're one, right? And to me, understanding that we're not equal because we're one. Equal implies separation. This equals this. We've got two things here then. But when there's oneness, there's only one thing. And that's the way I prefer to operate in this world is with a consciousness of oneness. So equality kind of gets me into that troubling sense of separation. Now, for me, having cultivating humility has been one of the most important decisions and aspirations I've had in my life. And in that aspiration to have humility has come a lot of peace of mind. Let me explain that. So humility to me is knowing there's no better than and there's no less than. There is just oneness, just unity. And until someone is willing to accept it, even if they can't wrap their mind around it, but they're willing to accept it, until we're willing to accept the unity of all life, even if we don't understand it, can't comprehend it, don't feel it, if we're willing to accept that that is the truth, that there is only one, then there's no better than and there's no less than. And that dissolves the investment in separation. When there's no better than or less than, it's, it's a way to help dissolve this sense of separation. So humility is knowing there's no better than, no less than. And that to me is different than humble. It's different than humble because I think that a person can know that they are uh, very capable and that they're more capable than other people. Someone can know that they are brilliant and beautiful and talented and that their um, gifts are extraordinary and still have humility and still have humility. And that is what I aspire to. And I aspire to help other people recognize their genius, their brilliance, their magnificence, their perfection, their innocence, and have humility. Because to me, there is no spiritual awakening without humility. No spiritual awakening without humility. As long as we think there's better than and less than, there's no awakening. There's really not. There's really not. We can be more peaceful than we used to be, more loving than we used to be. We can be happier than we used to be. We won't actually have our mind open to the truth because we're not in agreement with it. And we get to choose, are we going to be in agreement with truth or not? So for me, when being challenged by the opportunity to worry 
about my father, my family, myself, my finances, my life, when being challenged with that opportunity to go into fear and the negative use of my imagination, that's when I can go into, I could choose peace instead of this. I am interested in seeing what's real and true and everlasting. I am interested in the truth and not in any perceptions. And if I do feel worried or anxious, I know it is because I am projecting a false belief onto the world. We're never upset for the reason we think. We always because we've been trained, we always think we're upset because of what's going on or not going on in the world. Whether it's our body or our life circumstances, situations, relationships, we always think we're upset because of what is occurring in our perception of the world. And that is never why we're upset. We're upset because we are entertaining thoughts that aren't true. <clears throat> Every time. Every time we're upset because we're entertaining thoughts that aren't true. So I'm going to invite you right now to place your hands on your heart. Close your eyes. Take some deep breaths. If you can, breathe in and out through the nose. And just open your mind to an awareness of, are you upset about anything right now? Have you been upset about anything lately? Can you see what you've been thinking and investing your energy into that's not actually true? Because what's true is true for everyone. So with my dad, I was feeling agitated because I felt like there were better decisions that could have been made, that things would be better if, but I don't know that. That is my perception. That is my projection. So when I realize, oh, I'm in perception and projection, I know it because I'm irritated, I'm bothered. Then I can abandon those thoughts and choose the truth. Holy Spirit, help me to see the truth of this situation. I'm interested in only energizing the truth of this situation. And when I'm willing to see the truth of this situation, the truth emerges in my awareness. Now I can recognize, ah, this is the truth. And now I can abandon the false. And I feel better usually right away. But sometimes we cling to our perceptions and projections. We think that our child should get into this college. And if they don't get into that college, the rest of their life is ruined. But we have no idea. Maybe at that college, they're going to find a mentor that will, will help them live their very best life. Maybe at that college, they're going to meet their spouse that's going to love them and support them the rest of their life. We don't know. It's just our perception, just our projection. We think if we don't get that job, if we don't heal that thing, if we don't find that money or, you know, we, all these things that we attach so much meaning to, I've given everything in this world, all the meaning that has for me. And if that meaning isn't making me happy, I am wrong. I am wrong. 
And even if it does make me happy, I can be wrong. Happiness is temporary. We are going for eternal, unconditional joy. Releasing the joy that is our natural state and is never, ever conditional. We do have to give up our attachments to conditional happiness in order to experience unconditional joy. So let's take a deep breath here and marinate in this awareness. And Ted, if you could give us another song, that would be great. Just resting in this awareness. What has been upsetting us? Can we relinquish our attachment to our perspective? Can we welcome the truth? It makes me, uh, brings me to mind for uh, a couple of different things, but one that the Spirit moved me to talk about, especially when we think about the events of today, you know, with the hurricanes and the elections and war. Um, makes me think of living in a day-type compartments and uh, as a method of accepting a day at a time and what I can do and uh, what good and what holy and what beauty can add into each day. So this is a this is something to reflect on on that. I live from daybreak to sunset. A better way of living I've not found yet. So till I find a better bed, I live. to work for a future day when I could take time to play I worked like a fool till the first sign of gray then I said Ted there's got to be a better way now it's daybreak to sunset a better way of living I have not found yet so till I find a better For my memories, the future's ahead, still waiting for me. All I have is now and a spirit that's free, and it's a good life if I want it to be. Living from daybreak to sunset, a better way of living I'm not found yet. So till I find the better bit, I live from daybreak. Yay. Thank you, Ted. Oh, I didn't make your spotlight. Oh, I blew it. I know it's just they're going to see me and not you in the recording. That's life. Life is happening all the time. It's happening all the time. I'm going to uh, spotlight you now <laughs> with me. All right, we're going to go into our breakout here and give everybody an opportunity to share uh, from their own personal experience. You can share what came to you in the meditation and how you'd like to hold it in your consciousness. Um, and uh, give me just a moment. People are shifting and changing here. And um, oh my gosh, they really are. Um, hmm, that's interesting. So, uh, yeah, 
that. Just give me one minute. Hmm. Okay. We got them all. All right. So I'm going to open up these rooms so people can have an opportunity to share because I know the sharing is so helpful and healing. So here we go. All right. Hmm. Interesting. Hello. Hi. So I heard it didn't work. Really? Okay. Um, not sure what's happening here, but Hang on just one more moment. I think I've got this. Okay. Um, all right, so I am going to, I'm inviting uh, Bo and Beth, who have both been speakers and, um, are part of our leadership to join us in the um, discussion uh, during the breakout. So Ted, anything you would like to share? Well, as always, I look forward to the opportunity to come and share the music. Um, um, but I really have been finding, you know, what's going on around the world today, the wars, uh, the election, uh, the weather, um, and choices, the choices that people are making, and big choices that are going to be made, like in this election. Um, and unfortunately, you know, even in a loving family, there's differences of opinion about climate, there's difference of opinion about politics, there's difference of opinions about the war. Um, and, um, you know, I, 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 went, I had a doctor's appointment this this week and my blood pressure has been high and talk about you know just the things needing a break you know uh, that's why I chose that Daybreak to Sunset song was I mean I really need to practice that I mean not know that and understand that the people that are brought before me are the ones I need to love they're the ones I need to try to understand. Um, and it's a challenge. It's a challenge right now because, you know, the, across the board, people are digging their heels in uh, and relying on what their belief space is. And uh, there's not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to some some people that I thought were pretty open-minded. Um, so yeah, but I'm happy to be here because I know in this in this circle that we can be we can be loving and we can be understanding and we can be open. We can have differences of opinion, but we can we don't have to take and dig the heels in and you know, get hard about it. So, yeah. So thanks. Give me a chance to <laughs> share that. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people feel the way you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Bo, Beth, either of you like to share? Well, it's October. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. Christmas is right around the corner. It's family time. I'm missing my friends in uh, that I left in the desert to come here five years ago. Still feeling sometimes lonely and detached this time of year, probably more so. Uh, I have to remind myself that um, I'm never alone and everything's always evolving and changing. I'm always on my right path. What I was reminded of today was that my journey right now is within, that that's where my focus is. And to continue to take that leave, um, leaving, taking the leap of faith inside in such a way that I no longer see the shore. Does that make sense? Yes. That do I have, can I make myself that will? Yes. So that's what has come up for me today. Thank you. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Bo. Beth? Yeah, well said, Bo. And 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 that's been well, kind of my journey as well. Um it has been to um to really begin to open myself to the divine energy and to feel and, and to learn to really be present. Uh, I, I've, I made that commitment at the beginning of the year and I've not been very committed to that mm -hmm. commitment, but I think with everything that's going on and, um, you know, a program, coincidentally came across my Facebook feed with Eckhart Tolle, um, Doorway to Presence. And I'm just really learning that that's where the peace is. And that, you know, I can't worry about, Jennifer, you were talking about worry. I, I can't worry about the past or the future. The present moment is all that I have. And that's where I <clears throat> feel the most powerful divine energy flowing through me. And, and I'm really, you know, that's really beginning to happen for me on a regular basis. And to, and that's what's reminding me that, that I have the choice and that that's the choice that I want to make. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and then my miracle circle, we've just been focusing repeatedly over the last month on different lessons about trust and I will step back and let him lead and and there's only one will God's will and you know um and I will loose the world from all that I thought it was instead of holding all these things in in place as being so important you know mm -hmm. um and and I'm really learning that the just the stuff is just not, you know, I, of course, I am not in North Carolina. I have not lost all of my possessions. I am not in Florida. My house has not been flooded and blown away. But, um, you know, it's just not what's important. Um, so that's where I'm at. And I'm not, you know, how much it really related to uh, all that you were saying, Jennifer, but about being humble and whatnot. But, uh, you know, um, that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Bring on the peace in the present moment. Not futurizing. Yep. It's it's a, a practice, right? It's a mental practice that we can learn and apply. And it's wonderful. I 
uh, you know, a lot of my life is focused on the future because I'm looking at the calendar, what classes are coming and organizing, and we have to have structures in place. And, you know, as the leader of this ministry, I'm constantly looking to the future and uh, can we pay our bills and you know, all these I'm invited to participate in this thing and that thing and scheduling them and what is our schedule it just there's a constant looking to the future constant looking to the calendar can you do this can you do that when can you do that meeting blah blah it's every day for sure it's every day and um but for me it's looking to the future not for my happiness never looking to the future for my happiness because my happiness cannot be experienced in the past or the future it can only be experienced now so it's a totally different relationship to the future than i used to have i used to think i'll be happy when for a lot of my life it was if i can just line up these things i'll be happy so then trying to line up those situations and circumstances to produce the happiness. And um, that's what most people are taught to do, right? If you have all these things, your ducks in a row, then you're going to be happy. And uh, we see people, I've talked about this a million times, we see people in the world who have all their ducks in a row, but they have no happiness. Because happiness comes from, I mean, I, I really do like to segregate joy and happiness. Joy is eternal, unconditional. Happiness is temporary. It is conditional. And that's not what it says in A Course in Miracles, but I find it helpful to distinguish between the two. So our eternal joy, our unconditional joy can exist in um, moments of real difficulty. We can still feel and be in touch with the joy there. If we're interested, you know, it has to do with our perspective. Pain is a wrong perspective. So we we can be in difficult times, but still feel the wellspring of joy that's ours naturally. And that's what my experience of my mother's terminal illness gave me was that real understanding that happiness uh, is conditional and joy is not. And I can wake up joyful, even though the situation and circumstances of my life are not how I would like them. And I'm not comfortable um, with uh, some of the aspects at all, but I can still feel the wellspring of joy that is there because and because the wellspring of joy comes from knowing that we're part of God being in that place of feeling connected to our divinity. Yeah. That pure presence that Beth was talking about. All right, everybody's coming back. And thank you, Beth and Bo, for your contributions. And um, I'm going to leave Ted spotlighted there. And uh, let's see. So how was that breakout? Was it helpful? Was it good? Got to talk about some things? Oh, that precious little girl. Uh, she's getting so big. Oh, my God. Okay, um, here's what's gonna happen now. First of all, if you have uh, an intention, a declaration, anything, you, a prayer request, anything you'd like to put into the chat, please do. And uh, I am um, inviting you to invite us to hold it with you so i invite you to do that if you so choose and uh let's see i'm going to make some announcements i'm going to pass it to ted and he's going to give us another song and then i am going to say a prayer so oh 
announcements. We I'm doing my um, workshop series, and I'm going to see if I can get you a um, hmm, a link to that. Oh my goodness, I didn't prepare. Here we go. Um, I'm going to, so my workshop series and the next workshop in the series, I will put this in the chat, but you know what else I'm going to do while I'm here is I am going to share the screen. So here is the workshop series. Um, and just managing all these little windows here. And uh, my deep dive workshop series, it's a new workshop every month. And uh, this worthiness workshop is this coming Saturday, uh, dissolving the belief in unworthiness and unlovability. It impacts every area of your life. So you can sign up for the whole series or you can sign up for just one. And basically if you sign up for the whole series, then um, it's like getting a free workshop every few months, basically. And there's bonuses, et cetera. So you have the link there and you can find it also on the class page at, at powerofloveministry.net. This week, we're going to open the registration for Masterful Living 2025, and it has bonuses. We have a fast action bonus. Uh, this is for people entering Masterful Living for the first time. And um, but we have a limited number of bonuses in some cases. So all of that will be announced. I'm not going to uh, tell you now. Uh, so stay tuned to your email. And yay, Alice, awful, awesome. Um, okay, and Ted, I am going to turn it over to you. All right. Uh, just a reminder that the first Monday of the month, do uh, part of our, our grief work. Uh, we have a workshop with Dina and myself. Uh, definitely welcome. Um, anything from a loss of a pet to a uh, loss of a loved one. And uh, it's a safe, safe place to share. Um, the men's group meets this Wednesday. Any men that are interested, get in touch with the ministry. They'll get you the set up so you can get the Zoom. Men are welcome. Uh, we talk about walking the talk and living it uh, on Wednesdays, first Wednesday of the month, third Wednesday of the month. And if there's a fifth Wednesday, we'll do that one too. All right. I chose this song, uh, even though I've sang it a couple months ago, uh, because uh, it talks about the environment. It talks about the love in our hearts, and uh, talks about what we what we we speak about finding finding the truth. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. royal blue the sun dances on the morning dew and it's always spring I dream love shackled by pride in the chains of fear inside go dancing free
Oh yes, I dream The truth that's meant to be Is revealed to you and me And we believe Oh yes, I dream Hate is only found in history Love flows gently like a stream In all the anthems of the world Let's sing a peace and harmony The sky is royal blue, sun dances on the morning dew, and it's always spring. I dream, love shackled my pride, in the chains of fear inside, go dancing free. I dream The truth that's meant to be Is revealed to you and me And we believe Oh, yes, I dream It may be silly to think The simple songs that I sing Would find their way to your hearts And you would sing along with me The sky is royal blue, sun dances on the morning dew, and it's always spring. Yeah, I dream. Love shackled by pride, in the chains of fear inside, it goes dancing free. Oh, yes, I dream The truth that's meant to be Is revealed to you and me And we believe I dream, yeah Great dream. <laughs> yes. Ah, thank you so much, Ted. Thank you. Mm. Powerful. Oh my goodness. All right. So that's it. I'm going to say a prayer and I'm very grateful for all who join all who listen later, we are blessed. We're a blessing. Grateful and thankful for the love of God that shines so brightly in our hearts and minds. So grateful that the peace of God, the joy of God, the freedom of God is ours now and forever. That everything that God is, is part of our very being. We are grateful 
to recognize the truth and value the truth, grateful to lift up and to lift others. We are here only to be truly helpful. So we're holding the high watch. We're remembering the absolute perfection and wholeness of our being, sharing the benefits with everyone. We go forward, multiplying this consciousness of good, and we allow it to unfold with ease and with grace. We let it be, and so it is. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, everybody. Much love to you. Happy Sunday. Mwah.